judge in the Oscar Pistorius murder trial has ordered a ban on the live feed of testimony by pathologist Professor Gert Simon. Earlier, the state prosecutor had requested a broadcast ban on Riva Steenkamp's autopsy details. Now, the trial has entered its second week in the North Gauteng High Court in Pretoria. State prosecutor Heri Nell asked the court to rule that Professor Simon's verbal evidence not be broadcast because of the graphic details of the post-mortem on Steenkamp. The defence supported the application. Professor Simon explained to the court his reservations about the broadcast. He said issues of morality and the dignity of Steenkamp and her family must be considered. An adjournment was called for legal representatives of the media to address the court. Guard shift leader Peter Baba also testified this morning that he called Pistorius on the morning of the murder. Baba said Pistorius responded that everything was fine. Well, let's cross now live to our reporter, Griselda Lewis. She's at the court in Pretoria. Griselda, very good afternoon to you. Good to talk to you again. And a significant role player, if you like, in these court proceedings has been the media. And what we've been hearing is deadlocks or grey areas about the broadcast of details of the trial. So just take us through some of the reasons behind Judge Masipa's ruling in this regard. Well, a very good afternoon to you, Natasha. Well, initially, the pathologist himself, uh, uh, Professor Gert Simon, was very concerned about the testimony that he was going to give, which he described would be very graphic, would not uh, be in respect of the deceased Riva Steenkamp or that of a family. You would know that Riva Steenkamp's family, June Steenkamp, for example, on the first day when she arrived at court, she was unable to sit through the proceedings and basically uh, uh, shared a lot of emotion when she heard some of the testimony that was be being given inside court. And that basically what the judge says is that uh, during, uh, 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 basically, when uh, the, 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 the state and also the media lawyer went on to argue Argue why these proceedings should actually be broadcast. Basically, what it is is that the details that will emerge from inside the court when Professor Simon gives his testimony will be too graphic um, for, for to be televised. And basically, in a nutshell, what it's all about is for the is for Riva Stienkamp and her family to be respected as this takes place. But I must tell you, um, uh, already we're already seeing a lot of emotion coming from inside the court, Natasha. Already after this ruling has been made, Oscar Pistorius himself is unable to contain his emotions. He's been sobbing uncontrollably inside the court as details emerge of uh, the graphic details of uh, Riva Stienkamp's injuries emerge. Okay, and briefly, Chris Selda, how are media responding to the judge's ruling? Well, there's been absolute disappointment here, Natasha. Number one, because we understand the, the aspect where there cannot be live transmission of uh, the, the uh, pathologist's uh, testimony, but uh, there's also been a ban on blogging and tweeting as well. So this is really historic. The only time that we saw a ban on live tweeting inside the courtroom was when the, the case of the Morimole monster was underway also uh, here in Pretoria. So really a much disappointment because the general public also feels like they're being left out here. So I think it's really an issue uh, that there needs to be, a balance needs to be struck between what the public needs to know uh, in terms of the graphic details that uh, the pathologist is already giving inside and what the public generally needs to know and what the media itself is able to report on. So there's much disappointment here from the media. At first, there hadn't been a clear understanding about what needs to be done. Uh, the, the, the ruling by uh, Judge Masipa was quite vague on what the media should and when should report on. But there's a bit of clarity now relating to the aspect of there being no uh, uh, live coverage of the testimony, uh, no audio of, of, of uh, the testimony, as well as no tweeting as well. Right, so, Chriselle, there's somewhat of a compromise then being reached. Absolutely a compromise. I think what needs to be respected here at the end of the day is that somebody has died. And it was quite, quite clear from the beginning when we heard the pathologist uh, raise his objections to why he did not want uh, his uh, testimony to be broadcast. It was very clear from the beginning that it was going to be very graphic. And as I said, we're already seeing a lot of emotion from inside the court where Oscar Pistorius has buried his head in his hands and is unable to listen to the testimony that the pathologist 
Minister who did the post-mortem on Reba Steenkamp, Professor Gerald Seyman. He's already giving that graphic testimony. All right, super. Thank you, Criselda. We'll leave it there. That's Criselda Lewis bringing us updates from the North Gauteng High Court in Pretoria.